when I get into it, you know, again, I, I think growing up poor, you just, you, you grow up not having anything and seeing other people have all these things and, you know, you kind of want to have them and you don't know how. And I, I feel like being in a gang kind of provided some of that, you know, in a bad way. <laughs> um, you know, being in the gang uh, provided a, attention too that I felt like maybe at the time I needed you no know, recognition when everybody else would put me down for for stuff that I hadn't even done. I started believing in that. That's how I should be. I mean, when everybody would call me a gangbanger and everything else when I wasn't, when I was getting good grades and everything, eventually I started thinking, well, shit, maybe it's not. It's okay. And I started thinking, you know, like. Maybe uh, maybe this is how I should be, you know. Maybe maybe I am supposed to do be doing graffiti and dressing in baggy clothes and you know not not giving a damn about what my teachers or anybody thinks, you know. Maybe I should go tag up the relocatables in the whole school, you know. And, and of course, you know, I, I started falling into that trap that I think a lot of us as Latinos or as minorities fall into. We start seeing ourselves through the eyes of people that hate us, you know, through through the eyes of those that don't believe in us. You know, pretty soon we start believing that we don't belong in college. Pretty soon we start believing that money is more important than an education. When in fact it's an education that's going to get you the money. You know, we, we start believing that we weren't meant for school, we weren't meant to succeed. That we were just meant to be there and to be chingones, like I say, right? We, just meant, we were meant to do whatever we wanted to do, except succeed. Because that wasn't meant for us. Only white people succeed. Only rich people succeed. Only rich people and, and all of them go to college. College wasn't meant for us. That's why I started thinking back in the day. One of the things I like, I think helped me leave it was just having people along the way that would help me understand who I was and my own culture. I felt that uh, back in the day I knew very little about Chicanismo or about Chicanos or, or what Latinos were supposed to be. You know, I, I used to shave my head. I used to love the lowriders. I used to, you know, I don't even own my own lowrider back in the day. You know, I used to listen to Chicano rap and just do whatever I wanted to. And, uh, but I had uh, people along the way teaching me that, you know, part of being proud of being Chicano isn't just embracing the lowriders and, and the music and, and that culture. It's also being proud of your roots, your heritage, your parents, where you came from, the struggle, everything that your people have gone through, and everything that you need to do to get forward in life. And so I was lucky in, in that sense that I had mentors along the way. There was this lady, Chris Motley, that she was a counselor in junior high that I felt that she kept me out of a lot of trouble. And I got in a lot of trouble to begin with, but I felt that she kept me out of a lot more that I could have been in juvie and all that, you know, if it wasn't for her. Um, did a lot of stuff, man. She was just there. And she, she wasn't the type that would judge you for who, you, you know, for what you were. She would just accept you and listen to you and then just kind of talk to you. You know, she wasn't out to change nobody, she was there to listen and, and be there. And I felt that was really important at the time.